Amen. Are you excited about living for God tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I'm Amen. always excited to be in the house of the Lord. Always excited yes, to feel God's presence. Amen. Amen. I dread the day. Amen. I pray I never see the day. Amen. That I never, that I cannot feel the presence of God. All Amen. Right. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. So thankful to be in the house of the Lord Amen. tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 8. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And then we're going to turn over to Ephesians chapter 4, if you want to get ready for that one as well. John chapter 8 and Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. So thankful for what God is doing. Amen. Excited about revival services Amen. that we have coming Amen. up with Brother Calk. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Expecting Amen. awesome things. All right. Amen. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. And again, like I said, Ephesians chapter 4. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, amen, interesting phrase there, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? All right. Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn, condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Amen. The very one who could condemn her, the very one, amen, who was sinless, amen, let her go and said, go and sin no more. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 32. I'll try to hurry and let y'all be seated. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, right. that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, amen. whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Lord, I love you tonight. God, I pray that you help me, Lord. Speak through me tonight. Lord, anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. The church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I want to talk about, amen, the three most powerful words, amen, we could ever say to someone. Amen. Or we can ever hear someone say to us. All right. Amen. Those three words are not, I love you, although those are very powerful. Amen. But I want to talk about three little words tonight. Amen. That we struggle to say. All right. They are, I forgive you. Amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. How many times, amen, have you stood there All right. struggling, amen, to say, I forgive you? Yeah. How many times, amen, has someone amen, done something to you and you knew, amen, that they should forgive you, All right. amen, or hallelujah, you know what I'm saying, amen, on, yeah. and I just want to talk for a few minutes tonight about the three most powerful words, All right. amen, C.S. Lewis said, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you, Alexander Pope stated in an essay on criticism, to err is human, to forgive divine, Amen. Corey Ten Boom said in clippings from my notebook, 
Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment right. and the handcuffs of hatred. Right. It is a power that breaks the chains of bitterness yeah, and the shackles of selfless, right. selfishness. All Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to talk about those three most powerful words. Luke chapter 5, verse 18 through 25. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up upon the housetop right. and led him down through the tiling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. All right. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? They didn't realize who they were, who was in their midst. Amen. Yeah. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, right. but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. Right. Amen. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Amen. amen. So many times we get excited, amen, about the healing. Amen. But God, amen, not only healed him, amen, but he forgave him of his sins. It was just as easy for Jesus to forgive sin as it was for him to heal. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. And Matthew, hallelujah, Jesus showed us, amen, that there's more, amen, than how to pray. Hallelujah. When he taught his disciples what we call the Lord's Prayer. Hallelujah. There's a powerful message here on forgiveness in Matthew 6, verse 9 through 15. After this man, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. All right. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. All right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14 and 15 is what I want to bring to your attention. For ye forgive men their trespasses. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, right. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. There's a God's Word version that says it like this. If you forgive the failures of others, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your failures. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you do not forgive, then I'm not going to forgive you. All right. Amen. We've all been hurt at some time in our life. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a time in my life. Amen. I'm not going to go into all the details. Amen. But I could have been, amen, I could be a very bitter person tonight. Amen. I could be very, amen, bitter towards the church. Amen. Towards people that, amen, hurt me. Right. Amen. I want to read something to you tonight about bitterness. Amen. Hallelujah. This is titled, The Deadliest Woman in Town. That's the 11th patient so far that has been brought into the ER without, within the last 16 hours. The doctor said to the others in the room at the morning staff meeting, put up warning signs. Everyone entering their rooms must wear gloves, gowns, and masks. Quarantine them all. This is highly contagious. Notify the Center for Disease Control that we have an outbreak. Several nurses hurried out of the room to follow his orders. This strain of infectious disease is resistant to treatment of any kind. Most patients die. With this infection, although I have heard that a few have been known to recover, my guess is that less than 10% ever survive. It is a slow and agonizing death. Those in the room glanced from one to another. Most of them had already made contact of some sort with these patients. Fear, grip, fear began to grip their thoughts as they worried about their own safety and survival. Doctor, a nurse called out from the back of the room, what part of the body does this disease attack? 
The doctor looked at the papers and handwritten notes in his lap, and he raised his head and said, Autopsy reports clearly show major heart damage in every patient. The walls of the heart become irreversibly hardened. Also, some family members have reported the victim's thinking became irrational. The first victim that came in last night was related to seven of the others. The other three were her close friends. She is the carrier. Right now, she is the deadliest woman in town. She's infected her husband, her three daughters, a granddaughter, and two of her sisters. Now they are fighting for their life. The doctor picked up his black book and turned its pages until he found the citation he was looking for. He cleared his throat and read to his listeners the cause of this viral infection. Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Amen. As I was saying earlier, amen, bitterness, amen, it can get into your heart. Yeah. It can get into your mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. There was a time I was bitter. I was hurt very deeply. Yeah. Amen. But I can say now, amen, that I want what is best for them. All right. Amen. I'm not looking to be their friends anymore. Right. Amen. Definitely not. I would never even consider that. I'll probably never see them again. Right. Amen. But I do hope, amen, they make it to heaven. I do hope one day I see them in heaven, amen, because I've allowed myself to forgive them. I've allowed, amen, that bitterness to go, amen. We've got to be careful, church, amen. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 22. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Yeah. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily right. I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, Amen. and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they, may, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. All right. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Okay. Amen. Then Peter came. Yes. Amen. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Amen. That's a lot of times. Amen. Hallelujah. But we need to be forgiving as a church. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. There are people, amen, they, don't, they may not realize what they're doing. Amen. They may not realize what they're saying that hurts. Amen. We need to be a forgiving church. We need to have a forgiving heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Forgiveness is not so much to help and heal them. Amen. Someone may have hurt you and have gone on their happy way, not even thinking about the consequences of their actions. Amen. But forgiveness helps and heals you. Hallelujah. Amen. Research has proven that carrying grudges negatively impacts our emotional, physical, and mental health. It has also been proven that people who have forgiven experience a 27% reduction in physical symptoms of stress, such as backache, sleeplessness, headache, or upset stomach. They have had a 42% decrease in depression, 35% increase in self-confidence, and 62% decrease in feelings of hurt, and 15% reduction in long-term feelings of anger. Right. Amen. For forgiveness literally, literally restores your health, yet unforgiveness binds you and produces poor health. Amen. Proverbs 17 and 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. Hallelujah. We've talked about God forgiving us of our sins. Amen. We've talked about forgiving others when they've hurt us. Amen. But what about forgiving yourself? Amen. It's very powerful. Amen. When you're able, amen, to let go of the past 
past and forgive yourself. Amen. Amen. You may have done something to hurt someone. Right. Amen. Maybe you feel like you've sinned so much. Amen. That there's no hope for you. But I want to tell you tonight, amen. Our pastor already made mention tonight. Amen. The only thing that cannot be forgiven, amen, is blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the only sin that cannot be forgiven of. Whatever you've done, whatever is in your past, amen. God loves you enough, amen, that he died on the cross for your sins. Amen. He loved you enough to walk up Calvary's hill to forgive you. Amen. When you repent of your sins, when you're baptized in the only saving name, Jesus, amen, your sins are washed away, never to be remembered again. Amen. Amen. As far as God is concerned, they're under the blood. They're no more. It never happened. Hallelujah. Once you're baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if God is merciful enough to forgive you, amen, then you need to be able to forgive yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ephesians 2 says, and you have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Amen. But verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Hallelujah. Amen. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. That in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Right. Amen. Verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you thankful for our God that loves you enough yes. to forgive you? Amen, a God, amen, that loved you enough to look down over 2,000 years ago and said, I loved you. I loved you. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't care what you've done in the past. I love you, and I'm dying for your sins. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Are you thankful for the forgiveness of sin? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness holds you bound up in a prison of bitterness. Amen. amen. I want you to let those chains that are holding you bound fall off tonight. All right. Amen. I want you to let them just fall off completely tonight. They've been holding you bound for too long. God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to forgive you tonight. All right. Amen. Come he on. wants you yeah. to forgive others. Hallelujah. Yeah. He wants you to forgive yourself tonight. Yes, Break out of that prison of heartache. Amen. Break amen. loose from those chains of depression. Hallelujah. Amen. And we can stand tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a song that says there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. Let those chains fall off of you. Let those chains that are binding you, whatever it is, let them fall loves you. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the chains fall off tonight. If you've got to repent, repent and let the chains fall off. Hallelujah. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you need to forgive 
here tonight and let the chains fall off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and love the Lord and pray. 